40 years later. 40 years later. Uh, how do you assess progress over the last 40 years? Well, it's been painfully slow. Painfully slow. We spent, I want to say, we spent those first 15 to 20 years validating that environmental racism was a real thing. Yes. And I remember I got to a point, Ben, where I said, you know what? I'm not getting on any more panels. I'm not participating in any more conferences. I'm not doing any more debates with folks who want to debate whether or not this is real. I live in a community, I lived in a community in New York where a giant sewage treatment plant was built on our waterfront, our Hudson River waterfront, treating 180 million gallons of raw sewage and wastewater a day from the entire west side of Manhattan with no odor control devices. I said, even though these are not hazardous waste sites, and our research was about hazardous waste sites, this is the same phenomenon we it's are looking at. how you define what's hazardous. Exactly. We went on to, you know, continue to mobilize, to build a nonprofit organization, to empower people, to train people. And then because of Charles and because of you and the Commission for Racial Justice, and then to link up with other people around the country, because we thought it was only happening to us. We were so isolated in our battle. The city of New York would not work with us, would not meet with us. US EPA, Region 2, gave two findings of no significant impact to that sewage treatment plant because they were focused on restoring the quality of the water in the Hudson River. A, a mission that I believe in. I'm on, I'm on the board of Clean Water Action. I'm on the board of the Patuxent Riverkeeper. I believe in clean water and clean water in our natural resources, but I don't believe that to achieve that, you have to poison people and poison the air that they breathe. It shouldn't be a juxtaposition between Clean water, clean, clean air, exactly and right. clean people. Exactly right. The original decision to really sign off on the sewage treatment plan in our community was done by John Lindsay. Okay. And what they thought they would do to make these black people or black and brown people calm down, because we were mad as hornets, was to design and build a state-of-the-art state park on top of the sewage treatment plan. And wait, I just... Wait, wait, wait. You wait. heard me. I, I just want our audience to... Under understand what you just said. A decision was made to build a park. That's right. On top. That's right. Of a sewage waste disposal That's place. right. That's right. A park where children are going to play. That's right. In a community where already the children disproportionately have asthma. And the children had very little access to green space. So south of our community, Riverside Park is an, it's my favorite park in New York. It's an extraordinary waterfront park, right? But when you get to 125th, 135th Street, it changes dramatically. And it's really just a spit of land. It's not a park. South of us, it's a park. But once you come uptown, it's not a park anymore. It's a green space that goes along the river waterfront, but there are no, there are no playgrounds in there. There's no access. You used to have to climb down stuff and cross over the railroad tracks. Oh, did I forget to mention that? The Amtrak rail, railroad runs next to the water, and the New York City subway runs along a spine in the middle of the community. So we had two railroads, right? So, yeah, they built this park, the Riverbank State Park. And I should say about the Riverbank State Park, it is a state-of-the-art recreational facility. There's soccer, there's hockey, there's basketball, there's tennis, there's an Olympic swimming pool inside and out. There's a carousel, there's a restaurant. There's everything you could imagine that you might want in a recreational facility. You just might not want it on top of 180 million gallons of raw sewage and wastewater. 